Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to be going over some sampling methods on the 2000XL. Uh, this machine, it's an awesome machine, but it definitely has its workarounds. And, uh, you know, it's not like the newer MPCs or the newer machines that we have access to. Uh, those machines, you can just pick them up, turn them on, record a sample and chop up and let's go. Not so much on these type of machines. You got to really take your time and figure ways to make these samples work with your tempo, your session. Uh, just makes you work for it. Put it that way. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you guys one of the methods that I use when I sample on this machine. This method that I'm going to explain right now, it, it will be useful if you guys are MPC one owners uh, or any other MPC or or just any other drum machine that can sample. I'm not going to go through the whole entire layout of the 2000 XL, but just a quick run through right here. This is my sequence. You guys can see sequence. I'm on sequence one. This is my beats per minute. This is my timing, the 1 16th and you know, 4 4. And right here, this is my track. I'm on track one. And this is my program. Like, what program am I going to select? Uh, two bars, three bars, four, if I want to add or, you know, take away uh, a few bars. The three main windows that I use in the 2000 Excel, this is the, the three main windows that I'm going to be using the most, is going to be obviously my program or my, my session display, which is right here, and then my sampler, which is right here, my program editor, which I'm going to be right here. This is what I use a lot. And my trimmer, my sample uh, editor, which is going to be right here. Now, let's jump right into it. Uh, again, uh, with the MPC-1, I have a go-to method. And uh, with that machine, there is a go-to method. On the 2000 XL, when it comes down to sampling, I do not have a go-to method. Every track is gonna be different, every sample is gonna be different, but this is one of my methods that I like to use when I sample. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna go to sample, uh, to our sampler and monitor. I'm gonna have it off right now because I you know, create feedback. And right here, it just lets you choose your input. Right now, I'm, you know, got my analog input. It's going to be a stereo sample uh, monitor. I'm going to leave it off threshold. Once it passes that threshold, it's going to start recording time. How much uh, time do I want to record? I just bump it up all the way to the maximum um, time that it gives me, which is 189 seconds when I'm recording in stereo. But if I'm in mono, it gives me a lot more time, 378 seconds. So my approach on the 2000 XL, I like to just sample clips. I don't sample the entire song. Uh, you guys could do that. And there is times where I, I, where I will sample a, you know, four measures or a five or something like that. But right now I, I want to just sample into each individual pad and start slicing every pad individually. So right now what I'm going to do on this uh, track that I'm going to sample, I like the first four beats of the intro. I'm going to hit record and I'm going to just capture those four beats. There you go. I just got the beginning and um, I'm going to name this uh, Chops. And right here, as you guys notice, to name your samples, you got to use these pads, which is pretty cool. You get used to it after a while. Hit enter. And now right here in the bottom, it says, do I want to assign this sample that I just uh, captured into one of these pads? On the two, on the MPC one, I don't do any of this. I just sample it, chop it, and create a program, and it does it all for me. On this machine, I actually want to start assigning these small little snippets that I'm grabbing into some of these pads. Like this four bars that I just grabbed right now, I want to put that on, on pad one. So once I do that, I'm going to, it says you want to play it, you want to keep it, you want to retry to sample that again. I'm actually going to keep it. Hit keep. Once I have that and it's kept right there, I'm going to go through this record and let's listen to more clips that I might want to sample. I like this. On this one, it's just telling me where do I want to put this other measure that I just sampled. I'm going to put that on pad two. Hit keep. Let's keep looking. See, I'm just grabbing little uh, clips and I'm throwing them into these pads. I'm going to hit keep right there and let's keep uh, searching. Right 
there. I'm gonna throw that right here. Cool. Uh, let's keep it going. <laughs> so as you guys see, um, I'll, I can spend a very long time, and that's why uh, people say like on the 2000 XL or in any of these older machines, it's gonna take you a long time to sample, chop up your samples. I'm just getting started. On the MPC one, I would have been done already. I'd had my program created, ready to, I would already be in my drums laying those down. But this is the beauty of this machine. You just grow with the process of making music and I'm connecting with the song. Now, if I'm like 30 minutes invested in this and chopping up my samples, I'm like, oh shoot, this is actually not coming out good, which that happens a lot. <laughs> you just gotta turn it off. <laughs> You know, hopefully it comes out better next time. But, you know, right now I'm going to stop. I got five uh, samples into five different pads. I'm going to stop right here. Let me see what I got. Let me see if I can create a four bar loop or a two bar loop with what I have so far. Uh, usually I'll stop right here and I'm going to continue with this uh, track that I'm going to sample. But once I have an idea of what direction I'm taking it towards, I'll continue to search for other snippets of this track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to trim some of these pads. Uh, I'm going to start off. I'm going to go to shift trim. So this is the sample editor right here. This is the start of your sample, the end of your sample. If you guys want to make your selections, you know, and this is the end of the selection and so on and so on. But right now we're not going to focus too much on this because I'm not going to be making loops. I just want to get the down uh, beat of these pads. I want to make sure I'm on the down beat. I don't really care about the, the end of this. I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to create a loop right now. So right here, I'm going to just make sure I start on the down beat. And on the MPC 2000 XL, you know, you can scroll through and this thing will take a while or you hit shift. Uh, hover over through the cursor and it goes through bigger increments. So, you know, as I'm getting closer right here, I know it's small and you can't really see it too much. I can hit open window. When I hit open window, it just kind of opens up my waveform so I can see it a little closer. Plus, as I'm scrolling through, I can be hitting the pad uh, so I can be hearing what I'm doing. <laughs> So I'm gonna leave that right there. I uh, hit edit, discard, and now let's go to chop chop number two, which was right here, and we're gonna do the same thing. Edit, discard. I'm gonna go a little quicker now that I explain a few of these methods. Let's go to the third chop. Let's hear this. All right, cool. So now we got those chopped up. Before I start playing these pads, I'm gonna go to uh, program edit and on program edit, these uh, samples are on my drum one, on my drum bank one. Now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go to parameters and I'm gonna make sure I set these pads. Right now they're in polyphonic. So if I start playing these pads, they're gonna start overlapping each other, create a big mess. I don't want that. I'm gonna just leave them to note off. I'm actually going to put all of these to note off. So all that's going to do is as I click the pad it's going to play when I let it go, it's going to stop playing. And right now what I'll do is I'll just kind of get the feel for this and see uh, how it sounds right now. The BPM, I don't know the beats per minute, but the way I like to you know, see what BPM this session is going to be at or this original track is at. I'm going to just play like two pads back and forth. And as I'm playing these two pads back and forth in the BPM that is at, I'm going to do the tap tempo and it's going to give me a rough estimate of what my BPM is. So I'll, I'll show you guys and it'll make more sense right now. Cool. So you saw that I just left that I'm tapping tempo about 78 beats per minute. Cool. Uh, you know, who knows if it's exactly, but it's going to be close enough. So I'll leave that right there and I'm going to play around with these pads and see what we come up with. Okay, um, see, like right now, I'm going to chop this pad up. I don't like that this starts on the downbeat. I want the snare hit of this one right here. So I'm going to go to uh, program select this pad, go to trim, and I'm going to just get it right on the snare hit. Open that. 
that up and let's see what this is. Close, go to main screen. All right, let's hear this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I, if you guys notice, I like the the fourth, or is it one, two, three, four, one. I like the fourth beat of this loop over here. Hopefully this is making sense because it's got her vocals about to come in. And something about me when I'm sampling, I love sneaking in little vocals and they get cut off drastically. I don't know, something about that just sounds very pleasing to me. So. I'm going to record this as a loop because this sounds actually pretty good. And right here on the timing, this is going to be if I'm quantizing. It's going to quantize at a 16th uh, note or you have quantize off. I'm going to, uh, on the 2000 XL, I don't know why, I don't like to have my quantize at 16ths. I like to have it at eighth notes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record. There you go. All right, cool. So that's the starting point. I like how that sounds. Uh, there's now direction to this. I haven't had no drums yet. Uh, we're going to wait on that. Right now, I'm going to just continue to search for clips in this record. Now that I have that, again, you know, I'm going to go back to my sampler. When I go back into my sampler, I already know what I have. I'm going to keep searching and see what else we find. So after like 15 minutes or 20 minutes of you know, doing the same thing as I was showing you guys in the beginning. Uh, I grabbed some other ones and I feel really good with this or, or so far. So I got. So that sounds pretty good to me. I want to add some drums. Now, one thing I want to point out is on this, the record that I was sampling, I did not pitch it up. I did not pitch it down. I usually like to pitch uh, pitch it down, my samples. Now, we're going to add some drums, and this is where it's going to get interesting. You guys are probably like, man, how am I going to match the beats per minute of the this drum break to what I have right now, which is 77 beats per minute on the session. So this is a cool little trick that I'm going to show you guys. This is going to be useful even on the MPC one or any other machine on matching tempos of your drums to your session. So let's jump in and I have a drum break right here that I want to record. Uh, obviously, this drum break is man, it's like way faster than 77 beats per minute. I'm going to record it anyways. It might work. It might not work. I'm not sure. So this might be Again, I don't know if it's going to work, but we got to try it out first and see how much we can push it. I'm going to hit record and, and let's see uh, what we can come up with on this drum break. All right, cool. So as you guys saw, it's uh, I think it was like two bars right there. We're going to name this drums. So go right here. D hit enter. I'm not going to put it on a pad. I'm going to just create this and I'm going to hit keep. I'm going to go to trim. And right here, we have that drum break that we just did. Let me see how many bars it was. Go down right here to the start and get that red and on the downbeat. Hit close and let's hear this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. It's actually the same exact loop. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to loop this. And the way we're going to get a perfect loop, so you guys see this, this is the start. This is the end of the se selection. And on the end, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to keep going until we got the end of this wave. This is where it ends. Hit close. And now I'm going to go right here on F2, which is your loop uh, selection. And I'm going to turn this loop on. Right now it was off. And once I turn that on, I'm going to go to edit. And it's going to ask me, do you want me to loop from start to finish on um, what I had selected already, which I do. Hit do it. Now it just is already looping what I had selected on my trim page. So if I hold down a pad, it should loop that.
All right, that's close enough. Uh, I think that's looping pretty good. Uh, what I can do is hit edit, and we're going to discard that so we can get rid of what's on the left and the right side, and we have that perfect two-bar loop. If I go to parameters now, I'm going to jump into the parameter page, which is F4. Uh, it's going to ask me how many beats are in that loop, which is two bars. So if it's two bars, that should be eight beats in total. So I'm going to go to eight. And now it's going to tell me the original BPM of that loop. It's a two bar loop. Uh, one bar contains four beats. So four times two, because it's a two bar loop, it equals eight beats. And the beats per minute of that original sample is going to be at about 90 beats per minute. So that drum break is at 90 beats per minute, but our session is at 77 beats per minute. So right here, this is uh, going to work in any machine you guys are in any sampling method you guys are doing. Uh, I have two options. Either I sp pitch up the sample that I have to get up to 90 beats per minute so I can match my drum break, or either I can keep the integrity of the sample and keep the tone, the key that is at, which I want to do that. And I can grab the drums and I can pitch those either down or up. I rather pitch drums up or down. Why? Because they're drums, they're percussive instruments. So there is no key on drums. There's not like, oh, it's an F sharp or in B minor, you know, they're just percussive instruments. So I can get away with that. I'm able to pitch it up or down and it, it, it'll sound good. <laughs> you know, hopefully it's not too much. So we're going to bring this down to 77. So what I'm going to do as I go to tune, I'm going to tune these down. So I'm going to bring this down. And as you guys see, I'm bringing this down and it's giving me a new tempo. It's slowing up that, uh, the BPM since it's pitching down. So I'm going to go down all the way to 77. Oh, we're all, we're already down here. Well, it's at 77.4. I'm going to hit one of these pads. It's going to sound so low. And it, 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 let's see if it's not too drastic. Cool. I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to go to main and uh, let's add that drum break onto one of these pads. Uh, I'm going to go to program and I'm going to go to my drum one bank one. Well, on my bank one, this is where I have all my samples. I'm going to go to a bank B and I'm going to get one of these empty pads. Let's get this one. And I'm going to assign that drum break. I'm going to go right here and it should be right there. Now, if uh, I want to do on track one is my sample. Let's go to track two. And on track two, I'm going to name this drums. I want to make sure my metronome or my, my uh, time correct is turned on. I had it off. So I want this to be right on the downbeat and make sure that's, you know, it's quantized. Cool. So uh, let's hear that. Cool. So that's actually, that's pretty close. So now when we're right here, uh, I could either go into my trimmer again. And if I want to pitch this a little lower to match it up, I can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go down to 76. I'm going to go, I'm going to tune it down one more notch. And I think that's going to even be better. That's much better. So as you guys can see, uh, the 2000 XL, what I just showed you guys right now on the MPC one, I could have done that in like 10 minutes, but on the 2000 XL, it takes so much longer. And, uh, one thing I am going to share with you guys is something about this machine as I'm making music. Yes. It's a 50, 50. There's times where I just I'm in the middle of me creating something. I've had like already 20, 30, even almost an hour invested into it. And I'm just like, man, it's just not sounding good. And I'm, it's a bummer because you just got to turn it off, you know, and disregard it. 
But something about the 2000 XL, it's more therapy for me. Uh, I just connect with it. I get so zoned in to making music and chopping up samples. It truly does make you better at your craft because you're taking your time. You're falling in love with this process. And yes, it might work out. It might not work out, but it's okay because you enjoy this process. And on the MPC one, yes, I have fun. I'm doing this way faster, but like I mentioned, it can take 10 minutes to slice up a sample and all right cool if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't on the 2000 xl you bet your ass i do my best to make sure it works and again that makes you better it kind of makes you a better it makes you a better when you're sampling music because you're using the most uh, that you can from your creativity to make something unique make something work and that's the beauty of this machine. Another thing, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. It highly helps out the video. And again, that's a way you guys can support me and this channel. So thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. I'll catch you guys on our next video. Peace.